Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you were unstoppable? If you did the things that other people did not have the courage to attempt, what might you have accomplished? Are you familiar with or have been a victim of the blank page syndrome or the writer's block? Well, you are not alone. Basically, every writer out there has experienced it and maybe even more. But worry not, Stephen Pressfield, a famous contemporary author, published a book titled Do the Work that will serve as a manual on how to beat all of it. Do the Work talks about resistance and rational thoughts and how they affect our productivity. We all face resistance in our lives, but oftentimes we fail to recognize it. Good thing though, Pressfield's book provides many examples to help you recognize resistance and what to do about it. Here are the top seven lessons from Stephen Pressfield's book, Do the Work. Lesson one, acknowledge that there is an enemy working against us. There is an enemy, an intelligent and always active malign force working against us. The first step to overcoming this enemy is recognizing its existence. Recognition alone is incredibly powerful. Know that you are not to blame for the voices of resistance that you hear in your head. If you have a head, then you have a voice of resistance inside of it. Lesson two, admit that the enemy is implacable. The hostile force that we are experiencing right now is very serious. It is not something we could trifle with or take lightly. The enemy is intelligent, implacable, protean, inextinguishable, destructive, and utterly ruthless. Acknowledge the enemy's existence and recognize the seriousness of this resistance. Lesson three, recognize the enemy is inside you. Resistance is not what one would call a peripheral opponent. It does not manifest from rivals, spouses, children, terrorists, or political adversaries. It duels within you living inside your head, tirelessly sending out thoughts of negativity to prevent you from completing tasks and accomplishing your goals. Never give in to the temptation of its negativity. You will achieve unimaginable things if you prevail against its resistance. Lesson four, understand that the enemy is inside you, but it is not you. It may be inside your head and it may feel like it is your own thoughts, but actually it is an enemy, a resistant version of you a rational and ruthless enemy whose sole purpose is to hinder you from accomplishing anything and going further in life. It is an enemy that you must defeat. If you were a knight, then that enemy is a dragon, a monstrous beast that feeds off and breeds negativity. Lesson five, battle against the resistant you. There is no means to be nice to the dragon or to reason with it or to surround it with light or tame it and make it your friend. The dragon breathes out fire and exists only to prevent you from reaching the gold of wisdom and freedom like it has been destined to guard it for all of its existence. The dragon asks for no quarter and gives none. Lesson six, notice that the resistance arises second. The principle that resistance arises second is the key to overcoming it. What normally comes first is the idea, your passion, and the dream of the work that we are very excited to create that terrifies us. Resistance is the shadow casted by our innovative self's son. So what does it really mean to us? It means that the dragon of resistance even reared its head and breathed fire into us. There existed a force so powerful and life-affirming that it summoned this beast into being, contrarily to fight it. It means that resistance is not the towering all-powerful creature before whom we are compelled to shiver in fear. Fear is more like the adult that won't let us climb that tree in the playground, but the urge to climb first. That urge in question is love. Love for the work, love for our family to whom we will offer our work as a gift. The opposite of fear is love. The love for the challenge, love for your work, the pure joyous passion to take a chance at our dream and see for ourselves if we could pull it off. Lesson seven, know that the opposite of resistance is assistance. In ancient myths and legends, the hero is always aided in his journey to slay the dragon. Providence brings about a champion whose role is to assist the hero. In our lives, it greatly helps to have someone that could assist us in overcoming the resistance that we struggle with that we battle alone. Our family, friends, and even life coaches could give us enough motivation to help slay our dragons and start moving towards our goals and achieve our dreams. The book emphasized resistance's two tests. Resistance places two questions to each and all of us. One, how badly do you want it? This is the resistance's first question to us. If your answer is not totally committed, then it is not good enough. Two, why do you want it? Is it because of these reasons? For babes or dudes, for the money, for fame, because you think you deserve it, for power, to prove something to someone, to serve your vision of how life ought to be, for fun and beauty, or because you have no choice. If you chose the latter two reasons, then you can stay on the island. If you chose any of the first seven, you can stay as well. But you have to immediately check yourself into the attitude adjustment chamber that the book talks about. In conclusion, Stephen Pressfield's book, Do the Work, talks about the resistances we face that restrains us from accomplishing great things, and sometimes even simple goals. It helps us recognize the obstacles that prevent us from getting our goals accomplished. How do you deal with the resistance that you encounter whenever you think about doing something? Let us know in the comments section below. 
Thank you for listening. If you like the book summary and you want to see more in this category, please like and subscribe so I can create more. You can also get a free copy of the entire audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time. Thank you.